1974 Cub. Uh, International Harvester Cub. Yeah, it's not a Cub Cadet. It's and just, it's not a low boy. It's not a low boy, it's just a Cub. So it's a big old farm tractor from 74. Uh, we traced the numbers back to 74 when we got it. We just got it yesterday. We hauled it here with a blown head gasket. Uh, this didn't have a blown head gasket. The vehicle we pulled it with did. But we put a uh, uh, crack repair or a leak repair in the radiator. And it ended up holding up. So yeah, yeah, anyway. So anyway, we towed it 80 miles. Um, we pulled this thing apart. Uh, pulled the spark plugs out of it. And we found some of the valves were stuck. This is called a uh, C60 engine. Yeah, it's about nine and a half to 13. 16 horsepower. Yeah, 16, 13 horsepower. It varies between the years and models. Right, so we're thinking this one's around in a 15 horsepower rating. 16, maybe 15 horsepower. Um, anyway, it had some stuck valves. This valve was stuck, exhaust valve, and an exhaust valve on this side was stuck. So we just pulled all the plugs, filled it up with tranny fluid, and uh, let it sit. Yeah, let worked. it let it sit for a little while. I've done this before, and you can actually see the valves when you pull the plugs out. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. We uh, we tapped on the top of the valve very lightly. I mean, very lightly, and uh, we spun it over and got the valve to kind of work itself down. Uh, should we take the head off and all that and clean it up? Yeah, probably. But we didn't. We got it running. It runs great. Uh, the smoke quit, so I guess the rings started expanding back the way they should. Uh, I don't know. Pretty good. Anyway, so now we got a, a charging problem. We just threw a, a new battery in it. Uh, and we got a charging problem. So we took the generator off this thing. It's not an alternator. It's a generator. And it's over here. We took it apart. And we wanted to clean it up because we weren't getting any charging. So we knew that it's either the regulator or the generator. So this is a generator, not an alternator. It comes apart pretty easy. Just basically two bolts. Hold the rear on, that's it. Right. You got the front of it here. It's got a bearing in it right here in the top. In the front. You shake it and see if it's got any play. No, it doesn't have much play, so it's going to last. It should last a while if we can get it to. So, if we can test it and it tests good, uh, but we wanted to clean it before we test it. So we clean this up a little bit, and then we clean this up. And all we did was take a sanding block, and then stick an impact with a socket on the end, and just spin it like that. Uh, you could do it on a drill, whatever. You don't need professional equipment to do this. I mean, this is this is an old guy's job, an old timer, uh, or just a tractor. If you got a seventy tractor. Yeah, if you got a tractor. And so, here are your uh, brushes. We put a little grease on ours. They're spring loaded here, and we've taken an ohm meter already, and we've tested them to make sure they're making contact. Now, look in, look inside here. You're going to have to make sure, don't confuse yourself, one side right here has an insulator. The other side is riveted directly to the frame with no insulator. So we're going to call this one the ground, or we'll call it F for field. Field is ground. That field slash ground lead is this side. So when I test this and I ohm it to the body of the the which I'm gonna call it, I should get I should ohm out. Uh, continuity. Right. On this side, when I test to the brush anywhere on here, the brushes, I should get nothing. I should it shouldn't ohm out. Okay. And then of course you got your windings in here. I forgot what you call this. Anyway, people call it the arbiter. No, this is the arbiter. We cleaned up. These are your field 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 uh, coils. Maybe. Field coils. Uh, these are magnetized, and this is just a giant DC motor. That's all this is: is a giant direct current motor. Spins backwards and charges the battery. 
well, I don't know about backwards, but, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it back together here, okay, I'm going to hold this in, and since this is on our international, it's set up so easy, got a pin. it's got a slot that it fits in, there's a nice fitting slot, now you can see our brushes are touching, ah, oops, Shit. All right, let's try that again. Start over. Uh, take our brushes, put them back in their slots, and make sure the spring-loaded springs are oiled. These little arms right here, because when we took this one apart, we noticed one of them were kind of stuck. weren't making contact. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't swinging all the way over. But since we oil them a little bit, we want to make sure you use something without graphite in it, like WD-40, do not use WD-40. I mean, you can use gun oil or some silicone lubricant or something like that. Maybe white or lithium. Or even white lithium or even some of that stuff. Or even with some wheel bearing greases you can use. That's what we're using on this. But you don't want to put graphite in here. Because uh, it'll short everything out. And uh, so what we're going to do is put the back plate on. I'm going to see if this thing works. There's two ways we can test this real quick to see if it actually works. Now, this goes for any generator. Now, remember that wire I was showing you that has a... Alright, there's the notch it fit in. Okay. Here's the bolts. Now, any generator can be tested like this. This has to be set just right to to go in. Our lock washers are cracked a little bit. Oh well. Alright. Let's find that place. <laughs> I got it. Alright. Okay. Any generator can be tested the way that I'm going to show you. There's two ways to test it. The two ways are you can hook up 12 volts to it to a battery and see if it takes off and starts spinning. Or, here's the thing though, the two leads have to be connected together. That's right. That. That's the big thing about that. To test the generator, uh, to test the generator as opposed to an alternator, it's different. These two leads have to be connected together. So we have to jump these two leads at the same time. So if I wanted to test this, I have to combine this one and this one. Hook a ground hook to Hook a ground to the, to the chassis of it. Yeah. And hook a hot to this, and it should take off like a DC motor and start spinning at whatever revolution. Okay, set your own meter to, uh, I mean, set your uh, meter to DC voltage and uh, connect the, the two terminals on the generator, which is F and D, field and direct, I guess, direct current for DC. And, uh, Take your positive lead and hook it here to your meter. Here, you connect it. Got Help it. me. And then take the negative lead here and connect it to the base, which is... A scratch piece of paint. Yeah, to the body of the Pretty unit. Much. And see, see if we get 12 volts or 14 volts out of it right there. Ready? Watch yeah. your meter. Okay. Clockwise, I think I'm going to spin. What you got? Right now we got nothing. All right. Testing this uh, generator, this international generator. This this generator is not an alternator. It's a generator. That means direct current. It's not alternating current. It's not an alternator. This is a generator. So this puts out DC voltage constant uh, while it's running. It uses an external regulator. It uses point contacts and solenoids to engage and disengage the battery. But anyway, we're trying to figure out what our charging problem is, so we're testing this. We put it back together already. We cleaned it up. And uh, there's different ways to test this. Some people jump a lead between these two right here, and they ground it, and they test from here with a voltage meter, positive, and they test negative here to the body, anywhere to the body, after they've, they've uh, put their lead 
from their meter to the, to the body. Some people take a 12 volt car battery, and this is a 12 volt generator by the way. Uh, they'll take and they'll cross the leads here. Uh, they'll jump them out. In other words, they'll, they'll connect them together with, with uh, anything out. Jumper cables. Jumper cables, well. alligator clips, whatever. They'll jump these out and then they'll, they'll test it by making it spin because this is a giant electric motor. That's all it is. It will spin just like a starter motor. But you have to get these leads right. Uh, different ones are wired different ways. So, one's an output positive, the other one is a field. Uh, but they're wired differently on different things. And we found that this one is wired a little bit differently than most people have shown. For other generators. For other generators. Uh, this is international now. So, what we found on this one is, this one, to get power to test it is, you'd have to connect the clamp from here on this lead. Now, I don't know if we call this one, I guess, maybe the field to, let's see, I'm going to use the same positive terminal to make a loop around. So, it's basic, I'm basically just looping it around to the chassis of the alternator here. Ground I mean, that, the, the much. generator, sorry. And I wouldn't connect there, I'd connect here. Because this is oh, now, yeah, now going to be positive output. So, I think. So put your positive lead on there. Got it. You got the negative? Or I'll take the negative and ground it to the chassis. Bang and gone. remember, this terminal, F, I guess it's F, that they're not marked. And they're ju it's jumped from here to the chassis. And we're going to spin it clockwise. working. Can't spin it any faster pretty much. Because it's engaging my impact. Uh, without a load, let's try it without a load. It will not engage my impact, I don't think. Nope, it won't. If you, if you had the negative on, it would read not even not okay. even one hole. So, now we know don't have a this terminal yet. right here has to be connected to the chassis in some fashion through through the tractor. Or a source of ground. Right. Or a source of ground to activate this. Which is your positive. Your Which ultimate is your ultimate output. Your ultimate 12 to 14 volts. Right. So, if I wanted to turn this into a DC motor, I'd connect this terminal with the body, and then I'd take that body to a negative, and I'd take this to a positive, and I'd have this motor spin if I wanted to use it as a powering motor or a generator or what or whatever so somewhere along the lines this and this have to come together to give me 12 volts out of here probably from the voltage regulator yeah so I have no manual on this thing I have to do all this crap testing myself to find out so we'll put it on and we'll see if we can get it to read while the engines running and we'll come back to the video. So we got the generator figured out. The generator works good. Uh, we figured out that uh, this is the what? That is the exciting wire. Well, it's a field wire, right? Field, they call it, yes. And this is the arbiter wire. Right. A and F. A and F. So this is not D. This is uh, F and A. And there's supposed to be a ground on some other generators for other vehicles, but this is grounded with the chassis. Right. Okay. So, so F field runs down to the to the regu to the regulator. To the regulator. Whatever they you want to call it. That's like a. Okay. That's a. So this is normally closed. The contact on underneath stays normally closed. And then this is normally open. So, that's the cutoff relay. Right. So see the key's even off right now. And it's still trying to stick. Right, well, that's what this adjustment screw is for right here, to, to open it up a little higher. But anyway, this has to make perfect contact closed automatically. And so anyway, then it gets excitement through this wire as it turns over. Then it clicks solenoid relay down. The cutoff relay, that's what they call it. Right, well, this is the cutoff relay, so... I guess when it senses enough voltage to the battery, 
uh, there's a there's a resistor or some something. There kind. is there's a counter mo there's a counter magnet right in there. It's kind of blackish. Right. It sucks that open. Right. To cease contact with the alternator if there's too much voltage. You mean generator? Sorry, generator. I keep getting them mixed up. All right. So. <clears throat> so long story short, normally closed, normally open. Key on. This makes contact. This. Once it, the engine turns over and starts up, this kicks on, starts charging battery. Okay. Basically, that's a light switch for your generator. Right, but this is the duty cycle. The responsibility of this is the charging duty cycle for this relay, as far as we understand. So this is the voltage regulator package, or the cutoff switch yeah. for a generator. So, like you'd have a built-in alternator with a built-in voltage regulator, well, this big box right here, four-wire box, does all that bullshit right here. Um, which is kind of crazy on this old old tractor that we got running. But anyway, I'm going to show you how it's charging the battery. It never did this before. It's all closed. That just closed. All right, battery terminal pull. I would never do that. But that generator is taking the load right now, the point condenser and all that to keep this engine running, keep a spark going to the coil. Alright. Try turning it off. Turn the engine off. That just popped open. That popped open? To cease connection with the generator. Battery and generator are not connected anymore. So it won't back feed. Right. And will not drain the battery. Drain the battery from back feed. Okay. All right. Well, we got it kind of figured out then. Without a manual, with no technical manuals. Or Hardly anything. any, actually. Yeah, just kind of goofing around, and we're running this thing without a gas tank. Why don't you show our viewers what kind of gasoline we're running on? How to safely run your tractor without a gas tank? Without a gas tank. Safely. Final. Oh. Hey, like that primitive design. Next step up would be a milk jug. Yeah, right. Anyway, yeah, today's gas wouldn't even melt a milk jug. Try 1960s gasoline. You mean the stuff that this thing ran on? Well, this is only seven to one, seven and a half to one compression. It would run on anything. From what I understand, we're talking to old timers. All right. Well, that concludes our our farm fun, funny tractor. Alton, uh, sorry, generator design. Next thing is going to be the radiator. Yeah. Hundreds of bolts just for a radiator. Hilarious.